Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. Bam Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here. Giving you a long-range forecast update, guys. I hope y'all are doing well this morning. Uh, it's going to get very dry across the vast majority of the Ag Belt region over the next 10 days. We still have some lingering upper-level low influences in parts of the Ohio Valley today, but uh, outside of that, really not much in the way of appreciable rain coming up. And so a lot of focus in today's video will be what happens after this next 10 days? Uh, can we get the rains to come back? Where will they come back? And what will it mean as we work into uh, June? Uh, we'll start looking at our week's three and four forecast, which does go into the start of June today. Kind of crazy to think about. Here's a look at the current radar. And again, this rain right now across Michigan and Ohio and far eastern parts of Indiana, uh, still related to the upper level low that's been hanging around now for, gosh, it feels like five or six days. Uh, you can see here it's just kind of continuing to sit and spin uh, across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. Uh, some rain working into the northeast as well. If we look down here, we have another system developing right now across parts of Texas and into Oklahoma. I mean, these areas, guys, have just been hit over and over and over with heavy rain. Over the past uh, 14 days or so, if we turn on our observed rainfall over the past seven days, look at the rainfall totals in here. We can zoom down into southern Oklahoma. More than a foot of rain has fallen. And again, all of that heavy rain moving in right now. If we look at the future uh, seven-day rainfall forecast here, guys, and this doesn't even include some of what's going on right now, you can see additional uh, one to two inches plus of rain in those areas. And then down here along the Gulf Coast, you're, you're looking at a widespread, uh, very heavy rainfall event over the next seven days. But then we zoom out, we go further off to the north, Take a look at this primary ag belt region, uh, not much in the way of additional moisture in the forecast. Here's a look at our next seven day forecast uh, in terms of how all this averages out. Much above normal temperatures here across the northern plains. In fact, 10 to 15 degrees warmer than normal over the next seven days for the Dakotas and parts of Nebraska and Minnesota. This warmth will bleed eastward and southward with time. And you look at the next seven days in terms of moisture here. Again, very heavy rain, southern plains, and then, then down along the Gulf Coast. Uh, much drier than normal, little precipitation for the Midwest and the north central part of the country. But how does that evolve as we work into the week two time frame? Well, the warmth sticks around. In fact, uh, widespread, much above normal temperatures likely for uh, the Midwest, the Northern Plains, the Ohio Valley, and even into the northeastern part of the country. But as this shifts further off to the east, as the warmth comes east with time, it opens the door back up for a stream of some moisture. Now, I think that your primary uh, heavier rainfall potential will be across the Canadian prairies and up into parts of the northern plains through this area in here. The lows will want to kind of track uh, east of the mountains up into the northern plains, and then it's north of that where some of your heavier rains will want to develop. I think where question marks remain, and I'll talk a little bit more about this here in a moment, what happens in this area? There's probably going to be some southwest flow. Uh, you might be able to get some messy moisture chances, but do we get an organized front? I think that remains to be seen. Still a little bit up in the air, though. If we take a look at the upper level pattern as we get into the week two time frame, you can see here your, your upper level low, uh, your, your low pressure systems tend to track through here. This is where your heavier rain chances will be. However, we have some southwest flow and we typically get some moisture in these areas when that happens. But what I'm concerned about is that it ends up verifying a little bit messier than some of the model data would indicate. If we take a look here at the EPS, you can see it's rather widespread with above normal moisture. The GEPS has a corridor in here through the central plains and the northern plains, but isn't as aggressive further down to the south and to the east. I would not be shocked to see something like this happen where parts of the Ohio Valley and the Southeast Plains end up a little bit drier in the 11 to 15 day time frame. If we look at some operational model data, here's a look at the latest GFS. This is the next 10 days. It tries to bring in some rain chances as we get into the following weekend, 17th to the 20th, but it's messy. Uh, it's a very messy type of a look. Not everybody cashes in. You can see here it skips out parts of Nebraska, North Dakota, Illinois, Indiana. It's not a widespread heavy rain look. If we take a look at the Euro latest European model, all the way out through the end of the run, you can see it tries to bring in some rains actually a little bit more south. Uh, has another upper level low that it tries to build in, but it skips much of the Midwest. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit in Illinois and Indiana on this particular model solution, but 
it has a gap in here. And I think that that's the takeaway that I want to make right now. I think that rain chances do come back into the forecast. I'm a little bit skeptical about how widespread they are and how heavy they are. And so this 11 to 15 day time frame will be crucial uh, to determine, okay, in the extended range, are the model data as we head into summer, are they too aggressive, too widespread? I think we'll know a lot once we get past the next 15 days. So with all that in mind, again, guys, you know, I think that getting a little bit more active late week two, but maybe a little bit skeptical of how widespread moisture ends up being for the ag belt. In terms of the pattern drivers, as we work into the weeks three and four time frame, out through the end of May and into the start of June, uh, our global winds continue to be weaker than normal, uh, down you know 1.5 points uh, below normal right now. It generally staying negative. It may rise a little bit, may trend a little bit more towards neutral, but typically we have a couple weeks of a lag on this in terms of the impact. So we should, regardless, still be feeling. Uh, weaker than normal with the global winds in terms of the response in the atmosphere out through this upcoming time frame. And so if we take a look at what the correlation indicates May into June, overall, it, it's a warm signal. And we've touched on that a lot the last couple of weeks. Uh, that pattern driver, which is our biggest one right now, is a warmer signal, especially for parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes, and into the Northeast. Taking a look at some model guidance, uh, there's actually support for this. There's a little bit better support from the American data this morning than what we had on Friday of the overall milder pattern. You can see the GEFS here. It kind of takes the core of the warmth uh, from being more north and, and shifts it a little bit south and east with time. The CFS overall, uh, widespread warmer than normal conditions, really don't have any big reason to disagree with these ideas. In terms of precipitation, the greens in here indicating above normal moisture, the blues and the purples indicating below normal moisture. You can see it does favor some rains, Canadian prairies, northern plains, maybe uh, across the southwest plains at times too. But this is a drier signal for the eastern ag belt. And so again, you know, I think that there's still some moisture uh, deficits that could start to develop in here as we work into late May and into June, I would say if anything with these, the tendency may be to shift it a little bit further to the west. If you take a look at model data, uh, we've got some support for this. You can kind of see GEFS week three and week four on the left, keeps the better rains across the northern plains, Canadian prairies. You kind of see that through here. It's got some messy rains across the central plains, but it's not super widespread. You can see some of the dryness here, weeks three and four showing up across parts of the central plains and into the Ohio Valley. In terms of the CFS, certainly has some rains up here. It's got some rains in the southeast. Uh, but again, you know, you go out into the week four time frame, it still keeps some dryness around. And so, you know, it, we don't see, we don't see a, a, with this time frame, a super bone dry pattern signal here uh, with data. But I wouldn't say that it's soaked either. Taking a look at two top analogs in terms of our global winds and a little bit of our tropical forcing signal trying to start to come back. 2018 and 2012 right now are the two most recent years that have some similarities to the upcoming pattern. You can see 2018 was warmer. It was more uh, widespread and a little bit more notable with the warmth. It was also a little bit more active. Uh, wasn't a, soaked, but it was a little bit more active compared to 2012, which was, of course, drier. I actually think a blend of these two ideas would be a very solid idea as we get into this time frame. Overall, it's going to favor warmth. You know, this corridor in here, if you blend them together, maybe a little bit drier, uh, but some rains across the northern and the western plains and the southern, south and eastern tier of the United States. And, and that's ultimately what we went with. We felt like those two years matched up well with the data. Uh, with that global wind correlation. And here's a look at our outlook for weeks three and four. You know, above normal temperatures, I really don't see that going away. Can you have some fluctuations with storm systems? Sure. Uh, but I think the vast majority of the northeastern U.S., Midwest, Ohio Valley, much warmer than normal as we get through this time period, which should lead to above normal cooling fan. In terms of precipitation, uh, going below normal with moisture for the Ohio Valley down through parts of the central plains based off a uh, decent agreement between the data that we showed and those analogs with better moisture opportunities to the north. Again, at least throughout the end of May. If there's a risk, you know, some of the data tries to bring in more rains through here, kind of starting to develop some northwest flow action into early June. I'm a little bit skeptical of that for a couple of reasons, but number one, analogs are not super supportive of it right now. 
uh, and I'll show you a, a couple of pieces of data as we close out this video. But I think the takeaway here, guys, you know, I think that there are still some rains, especially the further north and west that you go. I even think in this below normal area, you're not bone dry. There's probably going to be precipitation as well. I don't think it's as dry of a period as what we'll be dealing with over the next 10 days. Before we go, we did have an updated EPS seasonal outlook for June, July, and August. Here's a look at its temperatures for the summer months. Uh, it's very warm, and especially across really right smack dab in the center of the country, Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, Kansas, in terms of much above normal temperatures. Looks pretty similar to what our current outlook is. Uh, if anything, it maybe is even a even is a little bit warmer uh, further south into the east. Uh, but overall, supports the idea of a hot summer ahead. And in terms of precipitation, it's dry across the plains and up into the northern plains as well. A little bit more active further down to the south into the east. And if we take a look at our current June, July, and August precipitation forecast, matches up about as close as you can get, to be completely honest. And so uh, we still have a lot of support for what our current seasonal forecast looks like. Uh, we will have a final update coming next week and of course a full analysis with our webinar damwx.com slash webinar uh, next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Be sure you all get signed up for that or get the recording by signing up for that. Uh, one last thing before we go just kind of month by month. Here's June, July, August. You can see EPS seasonal pretty consistent throughout the summer months. Uh, June here July may be the driest month. That's kind of been our thought for a while, and this particular model would agree with it. And then perhaps some relief south and east as we get into August based off of this latest piece of data. Guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great rest of your day.